Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra. Volume I, Chapter 10. Of the pleasant discourse that passed between Don Quixote and his squire Sancho Panza. Full size now by this time Sancho had risen, rather the worse for the handling of the friar's muleteers, and stood watching the battle of his master, Don Quixote, and praying to God in his heart that it might be his will to grant him the victory, and that he might thereby win some island to make him governor of, as he had promised. Seeing, therefore, that the struggle was now over, and that his master was returning to Mount Rocinante, he approached to hold the stirrup for him, and before he could mount, he went on his knees before him, and taking his hand kissed it, saying, May it please your worship, Senor Don Quixote, to give me the government of that island which has been won in this hard fight, for be it ever so big I feel myself in sufficient force to be able to govern it as much and as well as any one in the world. Who has ever governed islands? To which Don Quixote replied, Thou must take notice, brother Sancho, that this adventure and those like it are not adventures of islands, but of crossroads, in which nothing is got except a broken head or an ear the less. Have patience, for adventures will present themselves from which I may make you, not only a governor, but something more. Sancho gave him many thanks, and again kissing his hand and the skirt of his hauberk, helped him to mount Rocinante, and mounting his ass himself, proceeded to follow his master, who at a brisk pace, without taking leave, or saying anything further to the ladies belonging to the coach, turned into a wood that was hard by. Sancho followed him at his ass's best trot, but Rocinante stepped out so that, seeing himself left behind, he was forced to call to his master to wait for him. Don Quixote did so, reigning in Rocinante until his weary squire came up, who on reaching him said, It seems to me, senor, it would be prudent in us to go and take refuge in some church, for, seeing how mauled he with whom you fought has been left, it will be no wonder if they give information of the affair to the Holy Brotherhood and arrest us, and faith, if they do, before we come out of jail we shall have to sweat for it. Peace, said Don Quixote. Where hast thou ever seen or heard that a knight-errant has been arraigned before a court of justice, however many homicides he may have committed? I know nothing about omessals, answered Sancho, nor in my life have had anything to do with one. I only know that the Holy Brotherhood looks after those who fight in the fields, and in that other matter I do not meddle. Then thou needst have no uneasiness, my friend, said Don Quixote, for I will deliver thee out of the hands of the Chaldeans, much more out of those of the Brotherhood. But tell me, as thou livest, hast thou seen a more valiant knight than I in all the known world? Hast thou read in history of any who has or had higher mettle in attack? more spirit in maintaining it, more dexterity in wounding or skill in overthrowing? The truth is, answered Sancho, that I have never read any history, for I can neither read nor write, but what I will venture to bet is that a more daring master than your worship I have never served in all the days of my life, and God grant that this daring be not paid for where I have said, what I beg of your worship is to dress your wound, for a great deal of blood flows from that ear and I have here some lint and a little white ointment in the alforwes. All that might be well dispensed with, said Don Quixote, if I had remembered to make a vial of the balsam of firebras, for time and medicine are saved by one single drop. What vial and what balsam is that? said Sancho Panza. It is a balsam, answered Don Quixote, the receipt of which I have in my memory, with which one need have no fear of death or dread dying of any wound, and so when I make it and give it to thee thou hast nothing to do when in some battle thou sayest they have cut me in half through the middle of the body as is wont to happen frequently but neatly and with great nicety, ere the blood congeal, to place that portion of the body which shall have fallen to the ground upon the other half which remains in the saddle, taking care to fit it on evenly and exactly. Then thou shalt give me to drink but two drops of the balsam I have mentioned, and thou shalt see me become sounder than an apple. If that be so, said Panza, I renounce henceforth the government of the promised island, and desire nothing more in payment of my many and faithful services than that your worship give me the receipt of this supreme liquor, for I am persuaded it will be worth more than two reals an ounce anywhere, 
and I want no more to pass the rest of my life in ease and hoe. Nur, but it remains to be told if it costs much to make it. With less than three reals, six quarts of it may be made, said Don Quixote. Sinner that I am, said Sancho. Then why does your worship put off making it and teaching it to me? Peace, friend, answered Don Quixote. Greater secrets I mean to teach thee and greater favors to bestow upon thee. And for the present let us see to the dressing, for my ear pains me more than I could wish. Sancho took out some lint and ointment from the alforwas, but when Don Quixote came to see his helmet shattered, he was like to lose his senses, and clapping his hand upon his sword and raising his eyes to heaven, he said, I swear by the Creator of all things and the four Gospels in their fullest extent, to do as the great Marquis of Mantua did when he swore to avenge the death of his nephew Baldwin, and that was not to eat bread from a tablecloth, nor embrace his wife, and other points which, though I cannot now call them to mind, I hear grant as expressed, until I take complete vengeance upon him who has committed such an offense against me. Hearing this, Sancho said to him, Your worship should bear in mind, Señor Don Quixote, that if the knight has done what was commanded him in going to present himself before my lady Dulcinea del Toboso, he will have done all that he was bound to do, and does not deserve further punishment unless he commits some new offense. Thou hast said well and hit the point, answered Don Quixote, and so I recall the oath in so far as relates to taking fresh vengeance on him, but I make and confirm it anew to lead the life I have said until such time as I take by force from some knight another helmet such as this and as good, and think not, Sancho, that I am raising smoke with straw in doing so, for I have one to imitate in the matter, since the very same thing to a hair happened in the case of Mambrino's helmet, which cost sacrament so dear. Senor, replied Sancho, let your worship send all such oaths to the devil, for they are very pernicious to salvation and prejudicial to the conscience. Just tell me now, if for several days to come we fall and with no man armed with a helmet, what are we to do? Is the oath to be observed in spite of all the inconvenience and discomfort it will be to sleep in your clothes, and not to sleep in the house? and a thousand other mortifications contained in the oath of that old fool the Marquis of Mantua, which your worship is now wanting to revive? Let your worship observe that there are no men in armor traveling on any of these roads, nothing but carriers and carters, who not only do not wear helmets, but perhaps never heard tell of them all their lives. Thou art wrong there, said Don Quixote for we shall not have been above two hours among these crossroads before we see more men in armor than came to Albraca to win the fair Angelica. Enough, said Sancho. So be it then, and God grant us success, and that the time for winning that island which is costing me so dear may soon come, and then let me die. I have already told thee, Sancho, said Don Quixote, not to give thyself any uneasiness on that score. For if an island should fail, there is the kingdom of Denmark, or of Sobradisa, which will fit thee as a ring fits the finger, and all the more that, being on terra firma, thou wilt all the better enjoy thyself. But let us leave that to its own time, see if thou hast anything for us to eat in those alforwas, because we must presently go in quest of some castle where we may lodge tonight and make the balsam I told thee of, for I swear to thee by God, this year is giving me great pain. I have here an onion and a little cheese and a few scraps of bread, said Sancho, but they are not victuals fit for a valiant knight like your worship. How little thou knowest about it, answered Don Quixote. I would have thee to know, Sancho, that it is the glory of knights errant to go without eating for a month, and even when they do eat, that it should be of what comes first to hand, and this would have been clear to thee hadst thou read as many histories as I have, for, though they are very many, among them all I have found no mention made of knights errant eating, unless by accident or at some sumptuous banquets prepared for them. And the rest of the time they passed in dalliance. And though it is plain they could not do without eating and performing all the other natural functions, because, in fact, they were men like ourselves, it is plain too that, wandering as they did the most part of their lives through woods and wilds and without a cook, their most usual fare would be rustic viands such as those thou now offer me. So that, 
friend Sancho, let not that distress thee which pleases me. And do not seek to make a new world or pervert knight errantry. Pardon me, you. Our worship, said Sancho, for, as I cannot read or write, as I said just now, I either know nor comprehend the rules of the profession of chivalry. Henceforward I will stock the alforwas with every kind of dry fruit for your worship, as you are a knight, and for myself, as I am not one, I will furnish them with poultry and other things more substantial. I do not say, Sancho, replied Don Quixote, that it is imperative on knights errant not to eat anything else but the fruits thou speakest of, only that their more usual diet must be those, and certain herbs they found in the fields which they knew and I know too. A good thing it is, answered Sancho, to know those herbs, for to my thinking it will be needful some day to put that knowledge into practice. And here taking out what he said he had brought, the pair made their repast peaceably and sociably. But anxious to find quarters for the night, they with all dispatch made an end of their poor dry fare, mounted at once, and made haste to reach some habitation before night set in. But daylight and the hope of succeeding in their object failed them close by the huts of some goatherds, so they determined to pass the night there, and it was as much to Sancho's discontent not to have reached a house, as it was to his master's satisfaction to sleep under the open heaven, for he fancied that each time this happened to him he performed an act of ownership that helped to prove his chivalry.